Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the B&H Virtual Event Space. That's right. You see it here. We're talking photography to cinematography, how to tell stories from behind the lens. And we welcome back our friend, our buddy, Ajaz Khan. Ajaz, what's going on? It's been a long time. How how you been? I am my, I've been good. You know, just, uh, yeah, it's been what, over six months. I'm, I'm rusty. You're rusty. It's okay. You could you could be rusty. I'll be the nail. We'll we'll, we'll get together. We'll make this work. <laughs> so cool. want to welcome you back and thank you for being here again. For those of you who are joining us, thank you so much for joining us. If you do have any questions that you want to get over to Ajaz, please feel free to get them in. If you're joining us here on Zoom, you can use the Q&A tab. Otherwise, if you're joining us on Vimeo or Facebook, you can use the comment section and we'll make sure to get them to him and address them but otherwise ajaz the floor is yours wait don't don't go yet scott i'm not going i'm here um so my question to you is when are we going to get the one-on-one -on -one energy meaning when are you guys opening the space so i can make my presentations in the space so i can get my answers from my audience instead of speaking to the computer and like hey guys are you listening i mean i you know it it makes a difference I, I, I totally agree. I know everybody everybody wants to get back and we're working to get back. We're going to be back hopefully very soon. Once we have a definite answer, you'll be the first to know. I promise. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. So what's the presentation about storytelling, right? <laughs> Man, I lost you there. Anyway. Oh, you, oh you're asking me. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's about storytelling. I was just joking. I was just joking. <laughs> So hello everyone. Um, so let's start with storytelling. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm gonna, you know, I cannot get the answers back from you. So I'm just gonna ask the question, wait for some time, let you give yourself answers and then we'll go from there. So who tells the best stories? You know, I, I cannot hear your answers, but I have something to tell you. I think the best stories ever, ever, ever told whether it be verbally or whether it be with sketches or whether it be with photographs or anything, the best story told are told by kids. Have you ever seen a kid telling a story? You know, he's so into it. He is so into it or she is so into it. They believe their stories so much that they make such an unbelievable presentation. And I believe as adults, we totally forget the passion is more important in telling the story than the story itself. A kid will be drawing something with the pencil, but for him, it's Picasso. You know, he'll come running to you and he's going to say, hey, look at this. Isn't this amazing? I mean, he believes it's amazing. So, you know, I think if you want to tell a story, believe it first believe your story, and then go ahead and tell the story to someone that is wanting to listen to it. So if somebody is into playing baseball and you're going to go show him something with soccer, he doesn't want to, he does not want to see your story. He doesn't care about soccer. He cares about baseball. So find your audience, find a way to tell a story passionately, because without that, it's not going to happen. And I, I personally look at kids, my kids, I'm blessed with two boys. And I, I follow everything they, they say, they do, they, when they speak, the passion that they have about the story or about what they're telling you. It's just incredible because it teaches you a lesson. And the lesson for me has always been, if you have passion about what you're telling, it's a great story. So, yeah, this was about, um, I would say this was about 2008, yeah, 2008, 2007. My wife and I were sitting in the living room in the evening, uh, getting ready to watch a movie. I was really excited. I remember that. I don't know which movie, but I was really excited to watch that movie. And all of a sudden, I got like crazy glass breaking. I'm like, what happened? Um, I look at my wife, my wife looks at me, and before I could go and check out what's going on, my little one comes running into the living room and he says, 
Earthquake, earthquake. Hell, there was no earthquake. He believed it was earthquake or he was just making it up in his mind it was earthquake because if he had to say, I broke a glass, dad and mom would go absolutely nuts on him, right? Broke a glass. So he changed it. He changed the story. But he was telling that he broke something. So it be turned into an earthquake. So, you know, if you find a way to tell stories, I think your stories would be received much, much, much better. You know, I've been fortunate enough in my life to, to be able to tell stories with photography, with filmmaking, with speaking. So not everybody gets a chance to do that. But as far as I'm concerned with storytelling, it's not about selling. You know, if you're telling a story and you want to sell something, then, you know, you're not really believing in the story. You're not really telling a story. So forget the selling and storytelling. Tell the story. The story has to be on its own. So we're here. There is a story that I'm trying to tell. And I would like you guys to take a look at this and tell me what, what, what is the story here? <laughs> I heard a rooster. move on um so what is the story there you know the story is not about ejaz taking photographs oh, sorry, sorry sorry the story is not about hey scott i'll need your help oh there you yeah go. there you All go right. no no it's okay i got it i think so so the story there is not, I am taking photographs. The story there is not about anything. It's not even about the muskox, not in the video, it's not. You know, the story over there is very simple. Look at these beautiful animals, look at the conditions that they live in. And that's the story at least I set out to tell. I wanted to tell that story. I want to tell the story about, look what they endure. Look at the conditions. It is absolutely miserable. It's cold. And I believe I, I believe I'm telling that story. I wasn't telling the story about, look at me and I'm there and it's beautiful and I'm doing X, Y, Z. No, that's not the story. The story is, look at these animals. Look how gorgeous these animals are, but look what they go through. So that was for the video. That's the story I want to tell for the video. Now, you know, of course, I'm a photographer and and um, I'm there to do something. I'm there to work or play, however you want to say it. Um, and when I'm there, I'm taking photographs. 
So telling stories in videos is one thing or films, it's another one thing. And if you're telling a story in a photograph, you have to first think, what is the story? What are you trying to say? Do you believe in the story? So for me, the story that I want to say over here is the same exact story that I tried to say with my video, is look at these huge, gorgeous animals. Look at the conditions because you can see all the snow. You know, you can see the snow, you can see icicles, and they're fighting and they're just going about living life normal. So that's the story here. Um, if I can do the slideshow well, I guess I'm gonna try that. There you go. So, you know, this, the story here for me to the audience is look how huge these animals are. Look how big this animal is. Look, this guy does not want me to be there. I'm literally laying 10, 15 feet away from him. And the reason why I, I'm not doing this because I want to post and say, hey, I'm not scared. I was scared. I was petrified of this animal. But the only way I could tell his story is to show who he is. And he is huge and he is big. Now, if I could, if I was standing up and taking the same exact photograph, he would not look the way he looks. The only way to make his story come across to the audience is to lay in front of him. And not the smartest thing to do, I get it, but I did it um, and it's here. And I am telling the story to you guys and you guys are looking at this and saying, wow, what a beautiful animal. Wow, I'm gonna to go to Norway and take such photographs myself. So it's always in the story. It's always in the eyes of the animal. Speak to the animal <laughs> when you are taking photographs. Like over here, the story is, uh, it's not a, you know, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Storytelling is storytelling. Storytelling does not necessarily mean story has to be deep. You know, in this case, <laughs> story, the story I'm trying to say to you is like, look at the environment, the guy's face is frozen. Can you continue looking at him? I think so. I think so. So that's the story I'm trying to portray over here. And the story here is, it's freezing. It's cold. I am going to be one with nature, but I'm going to survive. You know, the story here, all of it is all about survival and how these beautiful animals survive. And the story for me is to be able to capture that and then be able to show it to people that, that cannot go to you know, places like this and, and see it for themselves. And that's the story I choose to tell. So, you know, I love photographing cats. Uh, I love photographing dogs, but they are kind of a little bit easier to photograph, but, and people get to see a lot of dogs and cats. But for me, my storytelling comes from places that are difficult to reach. And for me, that, that is my fulfillment. Same thing here, you know, the story, what am I trying to say over here? Now, it was cold, it was crazy, it was blowing, like I was feeling, you know, <laughs> literally pellets on my face. And here I'm trying to compose my photograph by walking a little bit this side and walking a little bit that side. And the story I was trying to tell in this is look at his horns. And I hope I got that, I got that across. I hope that's where everybody's looking at and, and not his face. Yes, his face is covered, but look at those beautiful horns. I mean, they can be beautiful, they can be deadly, but look at those horns. That's the story I wanna say. Same thing here. I mean, look at that horn. It is gorgeous. And the way it's shaped, the way it wraps around his eye, I think that's the story I want to tell. So pick and choose your story within the frame because taking photographs uh, and then being able to tell a story with the photograph is just a little bit tedious because there's no way you can have your actor say something. There's no dialogue over there. So as a photographer, I am gonna say it's challenging to make your photographs in a way where it's telling a story and 
where are you drawing the eye of your audience? So clearly, if you're going to tell a story and you believe in that, I believe in his horns. Jesus, they are gorgeous. And that's the story I want to tell. So pick and choose your stories before you tell. Remember that little kid? He says what he believes in. He is Picasso, literally. You know, and, and if every one of us can believe that, we will make better art. We'll make better photographs. We'll make better everything. Um, so over here, I'm a little challenged with technology today, and I'm, I apologize about that. So here is, is a it is video of where I go and what I do. Now, if I stop this and take you guys to, uh, and take you guys to the next one, I guess if I do that, maybe I can get to the next one. There you go. Yeah. So if I take you guys to the next one, which again is absolute insanity, and then I take you to the next one. Sorry about that. Take you to that. I think I'm learning one one thing or the other. It's okay. Sorry. So when I take you from there to there and then show you this, there's a story that I'm, that I'm telling you. I, I believe I'm telling you the story that, hey, look, I'm going to a crazy environment. It's going to be absolutely cold. But I'm taking the risk and I'm going there too. Now, after I've done showing you this, I don't think you guys can watch me for that long. So let's fast forward this. After I'm done showing you, mm -hmm. showing you the snow, and then after that, showing you me falling down on the snow, and then turn around and hopefully this will go forward. <laughs> Does it? Okay. Um, and then show you this. You totally understand that he's in this place and he's taking photographs of Arctic wolves. Uh, and I hope technology helps me here. And bang. Okay, there you go. So that's another story that I'm trying to say. But uh, I'm, I'm just going to pull back a little bit and and go back to this slideshow, speak about this. What is the story that I'm trying to tell over here? You know, I'm trying to say to you that, hey, I got so close to the Arctic wolf. That's one story. Do you get that? I think you do. I'm not sure, but I believe that's the story. The other story here I'm trying to say to you is that, look, he's got snow and he's got icicles under his jaw. Uh, the other story I'm trying to say to you is, Look how gorgeous this Arctic wolf is. So you think about what you want to tell. It's your canvas. In, in this case, there is a story. So I was photographing in the Arctic. Um, and then all of a sudden, I, I, we found my tracker and myself, there were two of us, we found a pack of Arctic wolves. And instead of shying away, they started to walk towards us. And they literally came 10 feet from, from us. And, and you know they started passing one after the other. They were very curious. They kept looking at me. And they kept looking at my tracker, Raymond. Um, and then the alpha male, which is the guy on the left, and the alpha female, they must have gone about 15, 20 feet away from me. They stopped and they turned around and they looked at me. Now, what is going on in my mind? Uh, what's going on in my mind is I am sad that they're leaving me. And I believe with my heart and soul that they were sad because they were thinking, hey, we don't want to see, we want to see this creature more. So look at his eyes, you know, speak to your, your subjects. Look at his eyes. He's saying something. He's He's going to miss me. So, you know, if you believe in, in, if you believe in your emotion, 
at the moment of taking the photograph, that emotion one way or the other will come across. Whether you are taking a photograph of a lion, a, a tiger, uh, a wolf, uh, or muskox, whatever. I mean, I believe he looks very sad. And that's my belief. And that's what I'm selling. You know, and that's the story I want to tell you guys. Over here. So the, the alpha female didn't want me to come too close. And, you know, of course, I'm a photographer and I want to get as close as possible so I can get all the details and so on. So I picked up my camera and started to walk towards her. Um, maybe 15 feet away from me she was or maybe 20 feet away from me. And she just looked down and gave me that look and she like, get away from me. Now, I believe that story comes, comes across a hundred percent. That is what she's saying. She's like, get away. Don't come close. I'm just trying to tell you guys that, hey, it's a pack and they work as a pack. And of course, composition plays a huge part in how you frame your photograph and and what you do with it and so on. But you know, that is one of the one of the things that you do in telling a story. Composition is is key. Um, you know, keep it simple. Keep it simple. My storytelling was not, hey, look at the mountains at the back. It's very simple over here. They work in a pack. Same thing here, you know. They come close. You start to have a conversation in your mind about who they are, whether it's an animal or whether it's, you know, a model or, or whether I'm shooting fashion or whether I'm shooting wildlife, or I'm shooting films, whatever it may be. You keep that story in your mind and you keep that story constant in your mind. And that story comes across. To me, he's a mushman. <laughs> to me, he's, I can cuddle with him. I mean, he's a wolf. I'm not going to, but that is what I want to portray. I want to portray that he is super cute. And I believe that's what's coming across. Um, all right, so let, let's take you guys away from all the cold weather and, and so on. Let's put you in a 70 to 85 degree weather. So I've been going to Camargue. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a town in the south of France. So I've been going there from the past eight, nine years. And I've made really good friends. You know, Patrice is one of them. Uh, Tony is another one. And for COVID, I mean, once COVID hit us, nobody was traveling, so I wasn't going there. And instead of going there, I went to North Dakota and I created a film over there about the Nakoda horses. Uh, but when we were allowed to travel, I went back to France and I, and I was speaking to Patrice and I was speaking to Tony and I said, you know, why don't, why don't we make a film about the Kamara horses? And they both agreed. And and the story over there was, um, you know, Patrice is a French photographer. I'm going to show you guys his slide uh, and you can take down his, his website and his Instagram. Unbelievable work, just absolutely amazing. And he can help whoever wants to go there to take photographs. You know, he can help you guys. And then there's this rancher. Uh, his name is Tony. Well, you know, he's a guardian. Um, in France, they don't call cowboys cowboys. They call cowboys guardians. They don't want to be called cowboys. So, so Tony and his younger brother, Falco, um, they lost their father about two, three years ago. So when I was speaking to them about let's tell a story, Tony said, why don't we tell a story about my family? Let's speak about my family. Let's speak about my brother. And I said, sure. So now Falco is about, it's just, you know, this film is about Falco, really. It's about Falco, Tony, and Patrice, but the film is about Falco. It's this little kid who misses his father so much, you know? He misses his father. He wants to be a guardian. Um, and he's having a rough time trying to accept it. You know, he, he's looking at his older brother, which is Tony, and he's saying, I want to be just like him. You know, his, his mind is wandering and his mind is saying to himself, 
my dad showed showed my brother everything on how to be a guardian who's going to who's going to teach me so it's a struggle on how to be a guardian and so on so you know we start, i'm going to show you this clip it's uh, i mean it's not a clip it's a scene from there please don't don't judge me on the color and don't judge me on it's a rough cut so please take a look and and see the story that we're trying to speak about about falco this little 11 year old kid um, you know, who struggled so hard to learn how to be a good writer. And by the way, yeah, there's no sound and there's no music. That's, that's his brother, Tony. You know, I was there filming and this horse would just not listen to him, no matter what this kid did. Uh, but he, he didn't give up, you know, he just kept going and kept going and take after take after take. And, and I believe you did an absolutely amazing job. So, yeah, look at him struggle. He, he is actually struggling. He just doesn't give up. You know, he, he's not the kind of a kid who will say, okay, that's it, I'm done, uh, help me. I mean, of course he keeps asking his brother for help, but he's just at it every single morning, every single afternoon. As soon as he comes back from school, he's struggling, he's working, he's working hard to get better. And boy, has he improved. Now, while, while we're watching this, Ajaz, not yeah. to completely derail you and throw your thoughts off, and we can let this play as we, we have this conversation, talk a little bit about audio for something like this, because you mentioned that there is no audio, and obviously video is very important and tells one side of the story, but audio kind of wraps it all into one. When so you're bringing in audio, are you are you looking at using original audio? Are you using you know scoring? What's your thought process on something like that? Um, you know, when I, I I'm just so happy that you asked me that question, Scott. Um, when I first created before they vanished, I had no knowledge about how important uh, sound is. So for this one and for my other film, Trapped, I am paying so much attention to audio. I, the only reason why we don't have audio here is I literally came back about, I would say three weeks ago with all this footage and we haven't synced the sound yet. So as far as I am concerned in storytelling, um, audio is, so storytelling for films, not for photography, of course. Storytelling for films, audio is, in my opinion, is 70% of emotion. And then 30% is really your, your film. Because we don't, we, don't, we don't remember the last time we heard something until we remember the last time we heard something. You know, when do you sit down and say to yourself, hey, you know, I was sitting down in the restaurant and I could hear the car pass by, but the reality of things is that the car really did. And you heard it. And because you hear so much, you ignored it. And you were just focused on your spouse, your friends or whoever. So for me, if you want to tell a story, especially in film, pay attention to your sound because that evokes more emotion as far as I'm concerned than photographs. Or maybe I'm just being a little biased, uh, if that's the right word, towards uh, or a little, a little partial towards uh, films because I've been doing, I'm a photographer for the longest time, um, you know, doing films. So that comes easy for me. Sound doesn't. 
sound doesn't come easy. I got to think and I have to say to myself, okay, you know, what can, and how can this scene tell a better story? Do I add the sound of his, him walking, the horse, the kid walking, the cars passing by, the birds flying, the wind blowing? I mean, there's so much sound and it just adds another layer and adds another layer and adds another layer, which makes it a better storytelling. So thank you for that, Scott. I was thank you for speak. answering. Thank I you. Wasn't, I wasn't going to speak about it. Now you've thrown my, my thought process off totally. What am I going to say? Everyone's just going to look at me. <laughs> Sorry, that's it. I'll, 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 I'll see myself out. Goodbye, AJS. <laughs> <laughs> just, just joking, just joking. So I don't know what the next slide is, but... You know, it's good that Scott brought this topic up about sound. And I think storytelling has to come from, from visuals, from sound, from color. That's another thing that we don't talk about. And yesterday I was with, I was speaking to this gentleman called uh, Colin Kelly. Boy, what an unbelievable, I don't have his, his uh, website or so on um, to link and give you guys the information. But if you want to learn how to do color with, with film, this man is an absolute genius. And not only is he a genius, he speaks the common language. He speaks my language. I understand when he speaks, unlike many teachers who speak mathematics and X, Y, Z, and I, it just goes over my head. So I contacted him and I said to him, I said, I want to better myself as a storyteller and I believe color is very important will you please help me will you please teach me and he's agreed to do that for this film and the other one which you know I'm super 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 uh happy about so color sound music uh foley uh it, it all comes in together in telling a story so anyway back to Kamar um the story that I want to tell about Falco is his struggles and his achievements. And I think everybody should see how he achieves what he's achieved in, in learning how to be a, a guardian. Oh boy, not again, <laughs> hold on. Um, am I doing something wrong, Scott? Okay, so here's another scene from the same film. And over here we have uh, the horses, of course, and the sound is going to come, Scott, uh, and the color correction is going to be done. And in the film, we have this gentleman by the name of Patrice that I spoke to you guys about. And he is, his story is that, you know, he's a photographer and he takes beautiful images and, and that's him. And, and he works with Falco and the brother who are like typical Kamar guardians. That's Falco. I mean, that's my hero, that little kid. So, and once the sound comes in and the color is corrected, it will tell a better story. I, I was just in a rush to, to so excited to share all this with, with everybody over here and show you guys that, you know, storytelling uh, in photography and storytelling in videos or films, they're not all that different as long as you, believe what you're saying is going to benefit the audience you know so there is a benefit to people who are going to go watch this film it could be very simple it could be just you know i want to entertain people uh, or i could be sending a message it depends what you want to do but it's your slate you know do what you want to do and paint how you want to paint but tell a story you know the story is the key if you want people to pay attention to what you're doing, you tell a story. Um, I wish you guys were in front of me so I could stop this and ask you, hey, what is the story that I'm telling over here? But you know, you are, you are in your home and I can't ask that question. So maybe you can just send in a, a remark and then I'll be happy if, if what you have uh, understood versus what I'm trying to tell matches up. That's like success for an artist. So from here, let's go to, hopefully I'll be able to go through it. No. <laughs> okay. All right, so here, here it is, not trying to sell any one of them. 
Patrice is the photographer, that's his website, his Instagram, and then Tony is Tony. Tony's a rancher. He'll take you to his ranch, show you around. And he actually has cabins as well. You can, you know, rent the cabin, stay there. So these guys are amazing. You guys should go check them out. So back to France. You know, the story that I'm telling over here, I have a tendency of going back to my subject. And the story I want to tell everybody here is, and in most of my imagery or videos is, you know, we are living in such a beautiful place, our earth, and it has such unbelievable creatures, like the horses, you know, like all the animals. But let's try and tell the story that justifies who they are. They're huge. Sometimes could be one ton, you know, anywhere from 600 pounds to 800 pounds. Some of them are a little bit lighter, but besides the point, the point is that they are big, they're muscular, they're strong, they're beautiful. It becomes my job to tell the story so people can understand how amazing this animal is. You know, there's no photograph I have taken that the animal or the models look better in a, my photograph than they are in person. And that's my, my struggle. My struggle is to try to make them as beautiful as they are and even better, but I've never reached that. And over here, the story that I want to say is, look at this beautiful, muscular, gorgeous animal. Look at the power they have. And I'm trying to tell the story with the splashes of water. Now I could have stood over there and, you know, with this amazing tool that we have, I could have definitely gone and taken a photograph with my, my iPhone and it does 4K and does raw, it does everything. It doesn't cook for me, by the way. But it can take amazing photographs. Now, why didn't I do that? And I chose to use a camera and and use the camera to help me tell my story and the story of power and the story of beauty. So I, what I did was I just turned around and, and took this at a 15th of a second handheld. And I, I'm showing you one. I must have taken 10,000 of these to get one really uh, to be able to tell that story of power and strength. I had to do that. And I think the splashing of the water them coming up towards you, you have to be low. You know, I was laying down. Um, nothing would have happened to me. They're not dangerous. They see you, they move away, but you just got to hold it in and, and keep going because the story you want to tell is they're beautiful and they're powerful and they're big. So uh, over here, um, you know, the story I am trying to say is they love each other. And the focal point, I did the same thing. I reduced my shutter down to 15. And I let it blur. And I took gazillions of photographs focused on the eye. And I was waiting for when the right moment happens. And his eye is not all that sharp. But it's sharper than everything else. And it's telling a story. It's telling the story of love, you know, for me. And I think that's coming across. Um, so keep your story in mind. Believe in what you are doing. Think about the emotions that you have going on and what you want to portray and show your audience. And I guarantee you, it's going to come across. I mean, you may have to do it, you know, 50,000 times. If you have the patience, do it. Same thing here. I had this, they're dreamy, you know, they are creatures of God, I think. Um, how do I show that to my audience? How do I make this mythical? How do I show all of that? So there you go again. I, I turned my, my shutter speed down to 15 and I took 50,000 photographs. You know, Patrice was next to me and he started teasing me. He started saying to me, hey, you know, you're the master of blur and all your photographs are blurry and what. And I like, you know, that's great. 
I'm going to get what I want to get. But yeah, after 50,000 photographs, I got this. And thank God. Thank God that I took my shutter down to 15. Thank God for the story that I had in my mind to tell everybody. Um, yeah. So uh, this one, uh, before I start playing the video, so let, let me take you guys back from France, from Camargue. Uh, to North Dakota. Remember the, the film that I was speaking to you about that we created called Before They Vanish? Um, I'm going to play one scene from there. And, and I just want, and this, this, the story that I'm trying to tell, I'm sure you guys are going to catch it there, but the story of this gentleman who is trying to tell his story to his family and the family believes what he says, but they aren't able to act on it. So, so that story attracts the audience. They, we want to know more about him. We want to know why is he doing this and why is he doing that? Anyway, let me not speak much. Let me play this and then we'll come back and talk about it. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. Oh. So what's this about? Well, thanks for coming, girls. Um, last night, Dad shared some very upsetting news with me, and we wanted to let you know what's happening down at the farm. Okay, so what's going on? Is everyone okay? Frank got news from his doctor and physicians he works with that a, um, his cancer he has is spread to his bones. They don't know how long. He has, but it doesn't sound good. The big thing is, is when Frank is gone, these horses are going to be homeless. He's looking at us to do a 50 year commitment of our farm and ranch to take care of these horses. 50 years is a really long time. That's a big commitment. Yeah, you're talking about affecting the next two or three generations of our family. These horses are going to end up homeless. I don't know. I think we should try or do something. Paul, you can't expect the girls to make a commitment like that. They've done so much for me. You guys don't even understand how much they've helped me. Dad, I don't think anybody's denying that. We just have our own careers and families that we need to be looking out for too. The thought of those beautiful Nakota horses being homeless is gut-wrenching but I don't know if this is a problem that you can fix. I think this is a time when you need to put your family first. And the time, the time commitment that this takes. I think about how much you're down at the farm now and this on top of it. The kids wanna see you, your grandkids wanna be around you. And I feel like every time they say, mom, is grandpa going to be there? I have to say, you're down at the farm. They just want to be around their grandpa. Well, I think we're going to make a decision here today. I'm not sure what to do. I don't want to take from the kids. I don't want to take from you guys. I don't know what to do. Yeah, so <laughs> the story is in his eyes. You know, the story that I want to tell people is this man is torn. You know, he has to make a gut-wrenching decision, but he's got to do it. 
you know, who wants to take that kind of commitment? So how do I tell that story? And for me, a story like that, that's so real, I just have to let them go. Um, you guys are seeing this scene, which is about three minutes long, three and a half minutes long. We had approximately eight to 10 hours worth. I think it was in two days, two occasions that we did eight, 10 hours each to get what we got here. And I believe the only way I could have got this is to let them be. Uh, none of them are trained actors, they're real people. And none of them really read the lines and said, okay, this is what I'm gonna say and do. Of course, they had the dialogues and they had the points, what they were supposed to say based on the real life, you know? But how do I, as an artist, tell that story to people in such a short time and they get it? So I just go for one thing that I wanna tell. And my one thing in this scene was, I want the audience to know that this man is torn. He wants the horses and he wants his family. And I believe that came across. And I also believe that Paul and his two daughters and Barb, my favorite person in North Dakota, did just an absolute amazing, amazing job. And, you know, it's like magic. When magic happens, it happens. When it doesn't happen, it doesn't. Anyway, you guys should go watch this film. It's called Before They Vanish. A lot of sentimental stuff in it. And to the next one, no, not again. Hey guys. Uh, okay. Okay. So coming out of that film, which is this. Now, what is the story that I'm trying to tell over here? You know, I can't hear you guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, I believe the story that I'm trying to say to you is right now it's on iTunes and it's on uh, Google. God help me. It's on Google Play and Amazon Prime, and it's got all these awards and so on, and go watch it. That's the story I'm trying to say. So I hope my story is coming across over here as well. Um, you know, I, I think I the next presentation is going to be a little bit different because here I was going to interact with, with you guys, and I wanted to show you what happens when you take your words and change it around in telling a story and what happens, what comes first and what happens, what comes second and what people believe and, and think and so on based on what you're putting for a second, third, fourth. So if you guys remember the story that I told you about my son and he comes and he comes running to the living room and he says, earthquake. Now, Let's go back and think about it. Dad and mom sitting in the living room, little guy, you know, he must have been seven years old, runs and he says, earthquake. I live in New York. There aren't any earthquakes that's gonna make such a big difference where the glass is gonna shatter. What happens to, what happened if he came in and instead of saying earthquake, he says, I broke a glass. What's gonna happen? You see the outcome is going to be totally different. I broke a glass. Mom gets up, goes absolutely nuts. Maybe dad does too. I don't know. I don't know if I would get mad, but mom definitely gets nuts. When he says earthquake, internally, both of us were laughing. You know, we know what he did. He must have broken the glass. <laughs> He's making up a story. So in telling your story, choose what you want to say first and then go out with a punch, right? Earthquake it is. So I, I cannot do that here simply because I don't know how to handle, uh, I'm coming back after six months and I don't know how to handle the presentation here. I don't know how to shuffle it. So I'm just gonna show this. So that's another film that we're making. It's gonna be in North Dakota. It's, it's not such a, uh, it's a beautiful topic, but it's not such a, um, how should I say it? It's, it's dark. It's about sex abuse that happens in America. You know, we don't want to hear it. I was filming in North Dakota. I was filming before they vanished. 
And don't ask me how, but I stumbled upon this story, which was real, which is real, and the sex abuse and the sex trafficking. And I came back and I spoke to my wife and we decided that, hey, look, we have to tell this story, whether, whether it's going to be a uh, subject that people want to hear or not, we have to try and rub it in their faces. And that's the story I'm trying to tell with this one. So we did film our first scene, part of our first scene, the newscaster. And what I really wanted to say to you guys, look at this. And then if I show you this, what are you going to think? Good morning. We begin our newscast with a request for help. The Dickinson Police Department is asking for the public's assistance in locating missing teenage girl, Brooke Thompson of Dickinson, North Dakota. Please take a look at your screen to see a current photograph of Brooke. Brooke was last seen yesterday around 5 p.m. walking towards her home following cheerleading practice at Dickinson Central High School. Brooke is described as Caucasian, five feet, three inches tall, 105 pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. According to police, she was last seen wearing black leggings, a pink sweatshirt, gray running shoes, and a black winter jacket when she left school. She was also carrying a black backpack. If you have seen Brooke or have any information concerning her whereabouts, please contact the Dickinson Police Department. We will continue to follow this story and bring you updates as they become available. Once again, here's a photograph of missing teenager Brooke Thompson of Dickinson. I'm Diana Hansen from WNDX. So, so, so what I wanted to do here is I wanted to ask you guys, if I played this and then showed you this, what would your emotions be? Or if I showed you this and then played this, what would your emotions be? So that's a game that I could not play. Or maybe I just played that, didn't I? <laughs> I don't know. So just think of what you're going to tell how you're going to tell it and how much impact you want from it and go tell that first. Don't wait for the second one. Um, good, good morning. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We begin our newscast with a request. I am so sorry, Scott. Uh, I have 11 fingers today. So, you know, so I, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was uh, insightful for you guys to see at least my process of telling the story. And I believe my process is very simple. Uh, tell the story if you believe in it. If you don't believe in it, don't tell the story. I remember that little kid who's Picasso and he believes he is. So the reason why you pay attention to his pencil figure is because he is presenting it to you that he is Picasso. So have fun with it, believe in your subjects. I'll speak to you guys soon and hopefully I will be better at my technology skills and hopefully I will just meet you guys in person at BNH. Hopefully, hopefully we could see you in person soon, Ages. We'd love that. We'd love to see you in person. And and this way we can we can eliminate any any computer technicalities for for you. You know, I I think oh, I going, that, Scott. that's it. No, listen, it's okay. It's all right. It's a computer. Yeah. It works for us. I think I want to bring it back to to the very beginning when you kind of posed the question about you know who tells the best stories because it it made me think and and you know I almost I almost not to not to challenge you on this I I definitely think you bring up a great point about children telling amazing stories and wonderful stories like yourself I have two wonderful children uh, who come home and tell me some of the most bizarre story sometimes <laughs> as, as a child as a child would right but yeah. i think i think even even more interestingly is is even saying the elderly and thinking about the the perspective of almost a different time you know i can i can remember conversations i had with my grandparents where obviously the 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 timing of, of when they grew up and things they were recalling to when I was growing up were quite different and, and stark contrast, <laughs> excuse me, in contrast. Yeah. And so I think, I think there's this kind of this full circle aspect of it where there's, there's the two far spectrums, the early stages, the late stages, and then you've got just this middle 
that 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 I guess we're in this whirlwind. <laughs> yeah, I, I seem to feel it's uh, you know the kids don't have a problem saying it the way it is, and elders don't have a problem saying it the way it is. I think in the middle we think a lot, and instead of thinking, we start going by our feelings in and learn from the kids and from the adults, elders. Uh, I, I think feeling is what you tell, right? You, you cannot tell a story without a feeling. If you don't have feelings to it, it's not a story that I wanna hear. You know, there's some practice that I do that my wife absolutely thinks that I'm totally bonkers to make my storytelling skills better. I'll just go and sit with her on the bench or we'll be you know, in a train station in Long Island Railroad or Penn Station or something. And I'm just, I'm like, I, I look at a girl or I look at a guy and he's wearing a jacket and he's got a black jacket and he's got white shirt, he's got a tie, he's got a briefcase, he's got pants. And I say, you know, he's a lawyer. Today, he had a really rough time at work because he got a horrible case He's not doing all that well. He's going to go home and he's going to fight with his wife and X, Y, Z and blah, blah, blah. And I'll make up this whole story and tell my wife. And my wife looks at me and like, are you insane? You don't even know who he is. <laughs> so, you know, you have, to, you have to learn how to tell stories. And I think I've told myself stories over stories. I love entertainment. And sometimes I'll call my friends and I'll say, okay, I'm listening. I have made the phone call, but I say, I'm listening. Please entertain me. And, you know, I, I think if they tell me a story, I'm happy. So I think storytelling is so important. And we've been telling stories as humans since Stone Age, right? Definitely. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask this question from Garrison. It's a little bit long, so you'll have to pay attention. But, it, but, it, but there's a point in it. <laughs> so Garrison said, amazing imagery and poignant stories, Ajaz. While I don't do much video... I do practice cinematic photography, which is seeing composing through the cinematic eye. I want my photography to look like it is from a movie. Thus, I've trained myself to see the world in 2391. Curious to know if you've practiced this process. Do you have any notable movies that you credit as heavily influencing your photographic cinematography style? Um. I, I think it's a great question, but I have to be honest with you, I don't. Uh, I'm not that I don't hear worship bigger, better, and amazing artists. There are artists that I hear worship, but um, I haven't learned storytelling. I think I just, you know, David Fincher, as far as I'm concerned, is my, my hero, director. And his work, right from from music to sound to foley to color to everything. You cannot beat that as far as I'm concerned. It would be wrong for me to say that I have um, you know, tried to do what he does. It's just not possible. His storytelling is his storytelling. You know, my storytelling is my storytelling and he is a great director. Um, I, I, I don't know how to answer that question, Scott. It's uh, it's a great question, but I don't know how to say this is my favorite because I have so many people that I learn from. I learn from my kids. I learn from the the kid that's walking, and I'm trying to see how can I make him look better. And then I learn from David Fincher, and I learn from you know Steven Spielberg, and I learn from all these people. Uh, so I don't have a favorite. No, I don't. I just I think tell a story the way I can tell a story. And that is my way of telling a story. I think I that answers the question. I'm sorry? I think that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd absorb a lot from, from the world, from, from kids and from your neighbor next door to, the, to Picasso. <laughs> but you can only tell the story the way you have to tell the story. And that's you. So if you want to tell a good story, just know yourself better. I love it. Now, Holly wants to know, you know, you've, you've shown us horses, you've shown us wolves, you've showed us some wild oxen. 
what's inspired you to photograph animals? Um, you know, I have to be honest, my, my inspiration of taking photographs and I choose these locations is, I, I want to show the people that there are beautiful animals in such environments. And not, I understand not everybody is as fortunate as I am to go to such places. You know, I mentioned something about taking pictures of dogs and, and cats. I would love to, I do at times, but my next door neighbor has seen them. So he's not gonna pay attention to it. And I'm not doing anybody a favor, bringing a photograph of the Arctic wolf, um, you know, that, that to me is I'm serving my community. I'm showing you what exists. How many times do people really get to see an Arctic wolf? Uh, bringing a muskox in that environment is the story I want to tell. Hey, look at him. Yes, I could have gone there during the summer and taken some beautiful, amazing photographs, but I don't want to tell that story. You know, I want to tell the story of, of their struggle of how they survive over there. So that's what inspires me of uh, just telling people stories, you know, and they deserve, they deserve someone who can tell their story. I love it. Well, I wanna say thanks again for being here, Ajaz. It's been far too long. So hopefully we don't wait another six months to see you. But if we have to, we will. I know you're busy, I know you're out constantly filming, working on the next project. So we understand. We're not angry at you. We're just saying we missed you. But uh, if you haven't had an opportunity yet, take a look at Ajaz's work. He's got his website for all of his stuff up here and where you can check out a lot of his work. So if you want to watch any of his films, you obviously have the opportunity to do that as well. But thank you again, Ajaz. Thank you to everybody who tuned in. We appreciate it. That is all the time we have for tonight. This has been another edition of the B&H Virtual Event Space. We'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot, Scott. Thank you, guys.